Hello, fellow podcasters. Today we got meditations on first philosophy by your infamous Rene Descartes, and here we will find the lovely origin of the all-famous "I think, therefore I am." And let's get right into it. So, basically,、uh, the Descartes meditations is about trying to kind of get to the bottom of reality. And how it does that is first it establishes that our senses cannot be trusted. After all, everyone else in the world could be robots with machines. They could be like walking humanoid beings that actually aren't human beings. And we might be in the freaking matrix. Everything that we live in might be a dream for all he knows. So all of our senses cannot be trusted. And especially the example of a dream. Like if we're in a dream, sometimes we can't even tell where we are. Our sensory experience is technically the same. How do we know that life isn't just a massive dream? And we then how do we know that we ourselves exist? Right? Like everything might be false. Well, how about this?、Um, math. One plus one is always two, and、uh, gravity always pulls smaller objects towards the bigger object. Right? But thinking about it, if there is an omnipotent God or some kind of divine being, then they could probably break those natural laws to make them make sense in his or her or their omnipotent power. And omnipotent being, you know, almighty, they can do anything. So technically speaking, physics, math, and anything else, it might not be real either. It could be simply illusion. After all, sometimes we get spun in our own lot web of logic to the point where we're trying to make sense of things, and they don't actually make sense when looked on by a higher intellectual individual. That individual being probably a divine being. Therefore, nothing in the physical world can be trusted at all. And he thinks, okay, I might be being deceived. Everything around me might be false. Gravity might be false. One plus one might be false.、Uh, my senses. The smell of this room, everything, everything might be false. Then what? Then how do I know I exist? Huh? I am doubting. I am being deceived, and I'm thinking about being deceived. So what if my mind, since it is being deceived, my mind at the very least must exist, right? Because you can't deceive nothing. Nothing. You can't doubt something if you don't exist at all. So therefore, I think. Therefore, I am. That is where Descartes' all-famous quote comes from. It's it's a very interesting thought experiment, right? And that kind of goes on, and it's very interesting, right? Because when you think about it, that's kind of saying that our thoughts and our body is um separate, and that's the duality of the mind and the body. That's a big philosophical concept that every modern-day philosophers hate. Because it kind of doesn't work. Because hey, like, how is our mind and our body separated? How how would that separation even work? How do they interact with each other? But in Descartes' logic, it's simply that since we cannot trust our body senses, but our mind is ultimately trustable, even if you know our our thoughts are wrong. At least the thoughts exist, right? So we can be sure that the thoughts exist. So that's kind of like the interesting premise. And the book kind of goes on into、oh, how this is a proof of God because perfect things exist and God is perfection. Therefore, God must exist if the perception of perfect things exists. But it's for me, it was kind of like a minor part of the book, even though it was you know quite a large quantity of the part, because you know it's logical, it's fun, it's a proof of God. I mean, Descartes was a very devout Christian, but again, I just I just connect better to the. Um, robots with machines, and we might be in the Matrix, and everything might be a dream argument. I, I think that's really interesting, because the thing is, what Descartes did here is he sat in a room with a fireplace, writing, and he had an existen- existential crisis. And using these thought experiments, he managed to pull out something—a conclusion that is utterly logical and something that can be done by any normal human being. I mean, sit down on your chair right now. Yes, right now. And think, okay, everything around me might not be real. Hey, even I might not be real. Physics might be completely bogus. Math might be made out of logic that isn't actually logic, but it's anti-logic.、Um, everything around me may be false. Then, how do I know I exist? Hey, wait a minute. I'm I'm thinking about, am I existing? 
then if those thoughts exist, then at the very least, my thoughts exist, therefore I must exist. It's actually, you know, using Aristotelian logic a little bit there. So it's kind of like a, a self-investigation that you don't need to be a freaking genius or or some scientist to do. It's a proof of your existence done in five seconds in your at your home, wherever you are actually, and just you close your eyes and you imagine you use your thinking faculties to imagine up this image. And it's that's such a neat, interesting proof, right? It's like you're able to prove everything about yourself. You're able to validate your own existence just by sitting down and thinking about something for four to five minutes. And that's awesome, isn't it? It's it's wonderful. And Descartes discovered that and he, he started this entire wave of philosophies in the Renaissance and it's awesome. And he's one of my favorite philosophers of, of all time just because it's such an approachable thought experiment that doesn't take much to do. It's logical, it's easy, therefore logical and easy, probably true. And I thought that's really interesting. Again, I believe that philosophers ultimately must pursue truth, whatever truth that may be. And I believe Descartes tried his best. And I believe that this entire way, this entire logic kind of melded together is very sound. And I enjoyed every second of meditations because it was like watching some guy have a mental breakdown, logically. <laughs> and, and that's comedic in ways you can't imagine until you read the book. And that's why I do recommend it to you, especially if you're a teenager or you're mid, you're like 40 years old, you're having midlife crisis, you're having existential crisis, and you kind of want to validate your existence, just read this old, white, dead white guy talking about not existing, then realizing that he does exist because he's thinking about not existing. So it's just interesting. And that's about it. Again, I highly recommend it to anyone really. It's an interesting read. And try the thought experiment if you really doubt the method. And hey, think about it a little bit. Because it's interesting how Descartes accomplished so much with just a little bit of thought and a little bit of logic. Hey, it's interesting. And like always, your plot crusher, Aaron the plot crusher, that's about it. The main takeaways of this is, hey, we exist because we think. Thank you.